Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to do a data analysis project using Python and its libraries. Our dataset is going to be about music sales, and you can find the link of the dataset in the description of this video. Let's start coding. So I'm just going to create an IPMB file like notebook.ipmb, and then I'm going to start by importing the libraries that we are going to use in this project. I'm going to say import pandas as pd, import seaborn as sns, and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then I'm going to say data frame is going to be, I'm going to load the data set, I'm going to use the read csv method from pandas, and I will say music data.csv like this. And I'm just going to quickly check if it's loaded correctly by saying data frame.head. And we are going to see and it seems great we have columns like index format metric year number of records and value actual i i don't think they are all na values like this i'm just going to say data frame dot tail and see yeah we got different values in here great so i'm just going to rechange this to head by the way you can change this number like if you just want to display three rows instead of five you can say three inside the parentheses and you can just do the same with the tail. You can just change this number and then by base, it's going to display five. And on the tail side, you can just do tail and you can give a number like 15, like the head, and you will get that number of rows. So I'm just going to get the general information about the data set using data frame that information. And here I can see the columns we have, the data types, memory usage of it, non null indexes and data types like this. Great. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say data frame that describe for getting the summary statistics for the numerical columns. Keep in mind that it only returns the summary statistics for the numerical columns, not for the string ones. And we can see that we have index year, number of records and value in here. From describe, we can get information about the distribution by checking the standard deviation, mean, and we can see the quartiles in here, and we can see the counts, great. So let's just check the number of records. We can say length of the data frame. It's going to give us the record count. It's 3008, great. So let's check the unique values in the format column. So for that, I'm going to say data frame format and I will use that unique after that, like this. Great, we have a lot of unique values. You can just say number of unique instead of unique for seeing the count of this, and it's 24. So let's just check the unique values in the metric side. I'm going to say metric, and I will use that unique again. And here is units value, value adjusted. So, by the way, if you just say number of unique, it's going to give three, and if you just say unique it's going to give the unique values okay let's display our data frame again and let's start analyzing it so we already start to analyzing it but we are going to do some group buys data visualization etc stuff like that i'm going to group the data by year and calculate the mean of value so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say yield mean and it's going to be a cure to the data frame group by I'm going to group by year and then I'm going to take the value actual and mean of them like this. We can check our yearly mean like this. We have out of rows and this group by operation is going to return a panel series. You can just check it by writing type and you are going to see its series. So you can easily manipulate what returns like you can just say head for example or you can just say tail and you can use aggregation functions like you can use standard deviation maximum variance minimum you can use different aggregation functions also what you can do is you can just i'm going to make this rerun you can just say like sort values and let's set ascending as false for getting in descending order and after that, you can get this ordered version in the end. You can just say head again for getting the top three in the ordered. And you can see that leader is 99.9, .9, 
second one is the 1978 and 2000 at the end as the third place great let's create a bar chart of the mean value of the value actual per year so i'm going to say seaborn bar plot and i'm going to say x is going to be equal to the yearly mean dot index and y is going to be yearly mean dot values and i'm going to say matplotlib.title and we will say mean value per year and let's give it an x label like year and let's give it a y label like mean value and i'm going to use plt.show at the end of this like this great so one thing that there's out of years and it seems a little bit complex but it's okay it's looking nice but we can just change this remember it we can just say yearly mean after in here we can just use head like this i'm just going to delete this i'm going to say head and 15 and i'm going to display random 15 rows from there like now we have the 15 years but what else we can do is we can just sort before the head like this sort values ascending false for getting the top ones top 15 like this and we can just check yearly mean from here we can see that it's sorted and we got our bar plot right now great so what we can do now is we can just skip this plot also you can just say tail after this let me also quickly show you that and you can change this number as you wish you can change this and your plot will change like this let's change this to head again and check our bar plot again okay great so let's get the value counts of format we have so i'm going to say data frame format and i will use value counts after that like this and as we can see it also returns a panda series so what you can do is you can just manipulate this like you can say head and tree for seeing the top three and it's good to know that value counts also return a panda series great so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to create a line chart of value over time but for that i need to sort the data frame by year in ascending order so what i'm going to have is I'm going to say data frame sort values and i'm going to say year so by base it's going to sort in ascending order and here we can see that it's sorted by year but one problem here is it's not going to change the sortage of the original data frame so what we are going to do is we are going to assign this to something like data frame sorted and after that we can just call data frame sorted for getting this sorted version by year great so for the line chart creation, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say matplotlib.plot and I'm going to set the data frame sorted year. And after that, I'm going to say data frame sorted value actual. And I'm going to set the marker as this. Great. So after that, I'm going to say plt.title and it's going to be value over time. In the end, I'm going to say X label and it's going to be year. I'm going to say Y label and it's going to be value actual like this. And I'm going to just set grid true. I'm going to remove this too so you can see the difference. And I will use plt.show at the end of this like this. So what else we can do is we can just remove this grid in here and i'm just going to be run this you will see the square background disappeared and if i just add the grid again you are going to see the plot background is going to be like this great so line chart is not the best option in this type of visualization but i just wanted to show it great so now i'm going to do some group buys let's group by format and get the values sum so for that i'm going to say data frame group by in the end i'm going to work by format and i'm going to say value actual and i will use that sum after that here it is so let's do something again like data frame group by we are going to go by metric this time and let's get let's use value again but this time with different aggregation function like maximum great also now let's do a multi-index group by like data frame group by 
but I'm going to give year and format together this time year format and I'm going to take the value actual dot mean like this you can see that we have two labeled multi indexed data frame also we can just say reset index for having a data frame like this great okay let's create some more visualizations like let's create a box plot so i'm just going to say seaborn that box plot and i'm going to set the x as format and the y as value actual and i'm going to say data and i'm just going to say data frame had 300 for not making it too complex i'm going to say plotlib.title it's going to be distribution of value by format in the end i'm going to set an x label like format and i'm going to set a y label like value like this and i'm going to use plt.show at the end of this actually there's an error value actual i made a typo on there let me quickly change this like this and it's going to work smoothly right now great so why i did this head thing over here is if i just change this to thousand you're going to see that it's going to be complex even with this and if i just remove this head it's going to be too complex so i didn't want that because i'm showing that in the video so i'm just going to say head and let's say 500 this time and hope it's not going to be too complex it's complex so let's just say 300 it was the base example we did great okay let's do another thing let's create a pair plot so i'm just going to say seaborn.pay plot and i'm just going to say data frame and the variables are going to be year it's going to be a list so i'm going to close that with bracket i will say number of records it's going to be value actual and we are going to say hue and it's going to be format okay so what we can do is i'm just going to say plt.title like this and i'm going to say pair plus of year number of records and value by format and i'm going to set the y as 1.02 and i will use plt.show at the end of this so it's an error let me quickly check it's number of records let me quickly check if it is data frame columns number of records yeah my bad so i'm just going to check now it's going to work smoothly i guess i'm waiting great so pretty good also from the right top side you can copy this or open this in new place like this you can just zoom in zoom out it's a nice feature i use it a lot when i'm working great okay let's do two more visualizations and then we can finish our analysis so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the total value per year by matrix so it's going to be a multi-index group by but this time we are going to also visualize this so for that i'm going to say year matrix sum and it's going to be data frame group by i'm going to take year and metric and i'm going to take the values of value actual dot sum also i will use that unstack after this so let's check how it looks great so here we have year metric sum and i'm going to say year metric sum dot plot and i'm going to set the kind as bar also it's going to be a stacked one so i will say stacked is going to be true and after that i'm going to say plt.title and it's going to be total value per year by metric let's give it an x label like year and y label like total value and we will use plt.show at the end of this great looks awesome so we are going to do a similar thing for the final let's find the average value per format over time so what i'm going to say is format year average is going to be data frame group by and i'm going to say format and year 
and I'm going to take the values of value actual and I will use dot mean after that also I will use add 200 for making it not too complex and I will use unstack again so let's check format year average from here great so there's any values but it's cool it's not a problem okay now what we are going to do is we are going to say format year average dot plot actually let's do this before the plot so what this does is i'm just going to show you you will see that it's the transpose great transpose dot plot then i'm going to set the marker as this great so i'm just going to give it a y label like average value and i'm just going to give it the x label like year and i will use plt.show at the end of this and here it is great so it looks pretty good also this one and we made a lot of graphs we created a lot of graphs we calculated different types of numbers and i think this was a great one and thanks for watching the coding part thanks for watching the video i'm sharing two or three new videos every week about data science and python programming you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this i shared a free data science bootcamp where i teach python pandas numpy matplotlib plotly seaborn and scikit-learn with three projects the video is about seven hours and it's completely free you can just reach to that video from the cards of this video or the link in the description